What's good, all my top notch motherfuckers? Welcome back to another 10 questions with a top notch. What the fuck was that intro again? Hey, fuck the intro. Today is a fucking excited to me. Exciting to me. That's how it's coming off tongue twisted already. Mmm, guys. I can't even tell you who I have in here because I've been amping it up so, like so much. You should know. Here we go. We just had this discussion. I had to go find another lighter. <laughs> What's up, Top Notch? <coughs> What's up, buddy? <coughs> oh man, a little, a little premeditation smoke. I'm uh, <coughs> I'm just getting used to using the bong again. I quit smoking cigarettes or tobacco in my joints just a week and a bit ago. Yeah. So I'm off the joints now because without tobacco, they just they don't burn properly. They yeah. just so anyway, I'm, I'm trying some different methods, some old old school methods, and uh, I got to retrain my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, you got to breathe in with your stomach. Oh, do you? Whenever you inhale, if you like kind of breathe in and you hit it with your your stomach, you oh, man. bigger, clearer hit. It's amazing. Hey, I'm going to try that out right now. It, it's tough. Tell Let's me. see. How come you told me this before? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. My name is Tom Notch. This is Jacob. How'd that go? It wasn't a, it was, like it wasn't a mega hit, but much easier. Yeah, that's great. There we go. Yeah, you don't uh, need your lungs, then you could just use your stomach to smoke the bong. Pretty much, you could just store food in there. Fucking right. Well, I'm feeling better now. There we go. <laughs> so, how's your day going? Good, good. Just another I, another day in, you know, like the endless string of days. <laughs> well, this time of year, I'm usually traveling. Like, I, I take the winters and go somewhere warm and cheap normally. But that's not in the cards so much these days. So I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just here in Nova Scotia. Got to live it up in the snow. It's, it's my first winter in Nova Scotia in, like, 20 years. Oh. <laughs> you guys got a lot of snow? Um, I'm right on the coast, and so right now the snow is mostly melted again because uh, it like poured rain a couple nights ago. But there was a there was snow for like a couple weeks, two or three weeks, like a fair bunch of it. Yeah. I, like, like I had to go buy a, another shovel. So. <laughs> you got to stock up on them. They they you smoke. could buy a brand new shovel and then automatically it'll just break. The corner will end up falling off on some ice. And if you work it too hard, yeah, sure. Like the, they're they're only plastic. You know, <laughs> you tend to go through them. All right, so let's ask this first question. How old were you when you got started doing acting? Oh, um, I mean, I first, like the first year of Trail Park Boys was my, you know, I was 25. Um, but I mean, I did a bit of acting, like so-called, you know, acting quote unquote when I was in grade seven. So I don't know how old people are in grade seven normally, like 12 or something, 14. Yeah, 12, yeah, 12, I have no idea. 14. But I remember going to this acting camp. Like, I thought I wanted to be an actor because, you know, it's like what young person sort of doesn't. And I went to this acting camp, and it was, like, for stage stuff. And I was, like, so – I had such severe stage fright that, like, right, that I knew, like, yeah, there's no way I'm ever going to do this yeah. again or, like, choose to. And then, uh, yeah, then lo and behold, uh, Trailer Park Boys came along. And the rest is history. So i I seen you were in a few zombie movies, too. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. After I guess after I started with Trailer Park Boys, I got in the acting union through that. And then when you do background uh, work on movies, and you get like a higher rate of pay, and they got to like choose you first, or there's you know there's there's certain rules. So I was I was doing a bunch of work. I was back in Ontario at that point, uh, close to Toronto, going to school. And, uh, they were shooting a bunch of stuff there, including yeah a, a couple of George Romero zombie flicks. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. You. Uh... We actually, because I think you did the Dawn of the Dead remake. Um, I actually live about two minutes away from the cemetery that the actual Dawn of the Dead was filmed in. Oh, wow. That's crazy. 
which like, is cool like, history. Like the original black and white one. Yeah. Oh wow, um, man, that's that's awesome. Creepy. Yeah, like the the Morovo Mall, like the mall they was running through, and all that. A few minutes away from my house. Oh yeah, so yeah, the, the original Dawn of the Dead would be the the mall one, not the black and white one. But yeah, oh man, that's an awesome flick. Yeah, yeah, it, it, there's some cool history in there. So, man, my lips. That's got to put a bit of a. My lips are super dry. I'm running a fire to keep the house warm here, so it really dries things out, including me. <laughs> but I got some, some weed, some weed like mash that I made. That uh, works pretty good. Like lip balm. Yeah. Well, it's oh, just nice. it's coconut oil and uh, olive oil infused with weed. But oh, yeah, okay. I mean, good for what ails you. But my lips might look a little extra shiny. <laughs> At least you're getting a buzz from it, though. Yeah, between that and the uh, stomach bong hit, whew, feeling pretty good. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I, my my wife is a professional bong hitter. I mean, she will clear a whole gram down through a tube, and it is amazing. And I'm like, how do you do that? No, 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 I can't. So I that blows my mind. Stomach. So <laughs> I started inhaling my stomach a little bit, and I'm like, it actually works. So I'm like, I got to tell somebody. I told somebody. Check that off. I mean, I, I'm gonna be telling everybody about that. You know? <laughs> so, you have any upcoming projects? I mean, I'm just uh, working away at you know my art stuff, drawing and screen print stuff these days. Um, I'm trying to take a vacation sometime soon. Like, I I feel I can't. I got a hard time managing my time when I'm just here at my house. Like, my my house is my studio, so. It's like I either work or like nap on the couch or have a bath or like cook some food. And sometimes I'm just like walking in circles, feeling busy, not getting much done. But uh, that's one of the benefits of traveling, like getting away from my stuff, I think is like one of the best parts of it. And I think it's somewhere warm, huh? And well, yeah, being somewhere warm is also a very good aspect. Although I don't like really hot weather. You know, I like, uh, you know, 20 degrees Celsius, um, which is like not too hot, not too cold. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. We'll take it. I'll, I'll take something in the 60s right now. A little, a little bit better than the snow. Mm. You're in, uh, you're in Pittsburgh. Yes. You've never been. I, I haven't really explored the states very much. Um, someday. Someday. <laughs> That's why I want to get up to Canada, but with the everything, we've been so surrounded the past year. Uh, like you said, I went from traveling to just stops, and now I had a I had to build a green screen room just to keep my my mind going, so I don't get stir crazy. Like you said, it's, it's either yeah. you're sleeping or the work, or you, you got studio, and then you go to eat, and then it's just a big circle. <laughs> an endless circle indeed it is an endless circle so what are your future goals for acting oh i mean i i don't know i i guess trailer, i figure trailer park boys will just go on forever at this point um <laughs> i don't like i don't really do try to get any other acting gigs i mean being out here in nova scotia there's not a whole lot going on yeah um but yeah, I like guess it's, it's not really, you know, it's, it's, it's never been, well, I mean, ever since grade seven, when I, you know, took the acting course and like had the shit scared out of me being on stage, I've never aspired to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is it like a, like a stage actor or just, just what this, you're doing now? The performance day after this, like, uh, like acting camp thing was a stage thing. Um, like just cause that's the way it was set up, I guess. Uh, like working in front of a camera is definitely easier than being on stage, I think, because you don't have yeah. big of a crowd of many people watching you. Like like the, the classic stage fright kind of thing can happen, you know, I guess anywhere, but it happens more on a stage. I think stage fright like increases proportional to the number of people who are watching you <laughs> or, you know, something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, but, I'm yeah. on stage really, except for a bit of stuff with the boys on the trailer park boys cruise. But otherwise, yeah, it's just like just in front of the camera. Well, that makes it that makes it fun. You get to film with your friends, and it makes you a little bit more relaxed every time you jump on on 
on screen, you don't even think about the cameras at that point because you're just so natural. And at this point, it's no longer a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're you're just so played into it, and that, that's what's cool. You get a even even a good bass like I can take stage fright away. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, like just knowing that they can take another take if you fuck it up um, takes a lot of the pressure off. So it's. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah, someone's bound to fuck up, and you know what I mean. But whenever it's all all good friends, and, and it makes it funnier because it, you 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 create those those back scene moments before you say cut, and then you go to the real thing. There, I was just talking to one of my other friends. The, there's so many behind the scenes like footage that they're that's unseen. That's probably hilarious from oh, all yeah. aspects. I mean, from movies to. I mean, it, it is unbelievable the the hidden footage that's out there. There'd be crap tons of it. I've I've fantasized about like it'd be cool to see, like you, you can cut together like, I mean I guess any show, but like Trailer Park Boys for example, just using all like not the takes they actually use, like use second takes, and it would be you know like it would be super interesting to to see something like that. But yeah, there's so much crazy shit that happens, like so many. I mean, sometimes scenes get cut because they just get fucked up, and it's just like shitty or whatever or not interesting but sometimes they get fucked up because it's like hilarious and wacky but just doesn't fit with what yeah. you're trying to do so it can't be used yeah and some things end up like in the extras i guess if those are still like anywhere um but uh, <laughs> they're somewhere like without dvds do you still get extras and behind the scenes footage for uh... i don't know like the, the old commentary and stuff like that. Yeah, I yeah. Just love that i would sit there and just listen to to commentary for hours i mean like I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Super Bad. The movie? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I can't uh, remember. I, I, only vaguely. I haven't seen it in, in like a million years. That commentary, I, I probably listened to it, I mean, hundreds of times. I mean, Seth Rogen and, and Jonah Hill and, and Bill Hader, I mean, they're amazing just on the commentary talking about the behind the scenes and stuff. And I, I like the behind the scenes stuff more than just like the action cut and what everybody sees put me behind the scenes and, and I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. And if you got an interest in like film and that kind of thing too, it could be super insightful. And uh, yeah. yeah, all the more interesting, especially once you know the film and have seen it a few times straight up. Uh, I see you like cooking. Uh, what's some of your, your favorite dishes? Oh man, um, I got some, uh, I just roasted the veggies to make some roasted veggie and cheese quesadillas for after we finish our uh, our, our talk. Um, you know, these days I, I, I sort of keep it pretty simple. Like I make things like uh, like lentil dal and I, I don't cook meat here at home. So it's like that sort of, you know, limits things. But I like cheese a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Love cheese. I You have to have cheese in the diet. But I mean, I, I also eat like a lot of like rice and veggies. I like, you know, rice vegetables and then some kind of tasty sauce on top and like and, and then some hot sauce on top of that sauce and uh, get it in gotta, me gotta sauce it up yeah you know maybe some nuts on there too for you know a little extra protein but uh yeah so you know rice veggies and sauce uh, i'm a happy man there we go something simple yeah, like relatively simple. Although with the sauce, you can kind of get you know complicated and start to like you know play around. And uh, although sometimes the simple sauces are the best ones. So, so uh, my phone keeps going black. I I need I should have every two minutes it just keeps going black, and I should have put my timer on. But uh, I gotta keep hitting the little button. What are three part question? Go ahead. Drinky poop. Hmm. There's a paper stuck at the bottom of my glass. Save that for later. <laughs> ah, keep it hydrated here. There we go. That's all that matters. So, like, Olympic sport right now. <laughs> Favorite movie? Favorite musician? Favorite cartoon? Huh. Um, gosh, favorite movie? 
Hey, movie, I'm uh, drawing a blank. I'll have to come back to that. But I, uh, Pink Floyd comes to mind first for favorite band. Although I haven't listened to them recently. Um, they're my uh, maybe my, uh, my all-time favorite. Uh, favorite cartoon, uh, uh, Scooby-Doo comes to mind. I haven't been watching that uh, much recently. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Rick and Morty would be my true favorite cartoon. Okay, okay. Um, I, but, I, yeah, I, like the, I like Rick and Morty. You you uh, have watched it, have you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't seen the third season yet. I got to. Uh, I, I was sort of waiting until the dead of winter, which is now, so maybe I can you know, splurge and uh, get myself some whatever it's on, like some pay so. channel. I think it's on Netflix. Oh, is it? I think it is. <clears throat> well, that's easy then. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably right next to Trailer Park Boys. I feel it might be on something that's a bit more obscure than Netflix, but uh, if it is, I'll, I'll certainly track it down either way. Favorite movie? Oh, yeah, favorite movie. Oh, man. Gosh, you know, earlier today I was thinking, like, I, I don't watch movies a whole lot these days, but earlier today I was thinking about and, you know, I guess re reminiscing and think, I, thinking I should watch uh, Zoolander again. So it's a, it's a super amazing movie, which I lo have, you know, have loved and still would love, I'm sure, if I saw it. Uh, um, although, yeah, pretty low class, maybe for a, for a favorite flick, but. <laughs> no, no that, that, that's up there. You, you've got to have the, that's like the perfect comedy. <laughs> oh, it's, each time you watch it, it's like, it's funnier somehow. Um, although, you know, it's, uh, I admit it's been probably, you know, five, years or more since I, you know, since I've seen it. If that's on Netflix, I'll watch that again soon. <laughs> but it's still oh, one yeah. of the movies that you don't even have to watch because you know the lines, you know what I mean? Well, just thinking about some of the classic scenes just brings, brings a smile to my face, but I, I, I find, like, when I watch it, I feel like, I don't remember this, but, you know, it's, it's some other sort of hilarious scene that I'm, I was just too stoned to remember. The case may be, but just, you know, more, more hilarity, more hilarity is always that. Uh, waiting behind the corner <laughs> oh yeah i've seen someone mention super troopers in here too that is definitely another great oh, okay that's why my uh, comments were jammed but for some reason there's not yeah, yeah they get stuck you gotta you gotta slide them up sometimes i, I can't I'm, I'm, I'm just sliding forever now so <laughs> uh. <laughs> it happens like we said we're, we're new on here I, I'm, I'm just learning this technology. You have to excuse me, people. <laughs> oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm now at the bottom. All right. I'm with you. <laughs> no more funny. Mm. Oh, yeah. So wh whenever you, you uh, smoke your bongs, do you pack them full or do you pack them like snappers? More of a, more of a snapper, I guess. Just like... like a, Again, while I'm training my lungs, I can't take the full bong. That's why I feel like if I get a go, it's just going to sort of burn and waste extra. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even with like a small hit, I usually don't burn the whole thing in one go, like with half the, you know, half the cone filled. So, yeah. I know a lot, of, I know a lot a, of people. I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, oh, I'm a recovering smoker. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how are you going now taking the tobacco out of it? I mean, I wouldn't put tobacco in a bong hit, like not since maybe high school. Um, but like I would smoke joints with weed and tobacco just because I found, I, I think I was just addicted to the combination, like the THC and then also the nicotine, you know, hitting the synapses and creating pleasant sensations throughout the mind and body. So it's like, definitely it's an adjustment. Um, sometimes right now, like I've got some Nicorette gum, so I'll like throw a gum in my mouth, chew it like 10 times and then take a hit. And like try to kind of recreate, like get the molecules working together again, but it's really not the same. That's a uh, that's a good balance. <laughs> that's it's, how you uh, it's ultimately, ultimately, it's futile and, and frustrating. Although I'm happy to have the Nicorette, I think it does help. Um, but yeah, it's it's not like smoking a joint. No, I guess no, I, 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 I said or not. That's definitely the first time I've heard that though. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure lots of people thought about that. Like, it seems like a really obvious, um, like, brainwave. <laughs> Although, 
I, I had not heard of it before, I don't think, it's uh, to be fair. <laughs> well, guys, if you're quitting cigarettes and you smoke weed, chew Nicorette and take bong hits. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm nine days in, I think, and so far so good, like nine and a half days in. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm resolved to stick to it. Like, I haven't even cheated with any tobacco. Like, I haven't even, like, gone to find a cigarette butt, you know, like, down to the mall and, like, bring it home and, like, <laughs> you have to disinfect it now, and then, like, break it open, dry out the tobacco. Haven't even had to resort to anything so extreme. I, I'm, uh, I'm That's using good. my willpower. That's good. Just keep eating that lip balm. Oh, yeah, I think I've looked it all off my lips already, actually. <laughs> it's good. This this is, is edible. I actually made a little label for it. Nice. <laughs> I don't think you read it. It says, uh, safe to eat. Yeah, because it's backwards. <laughs> oh. Then it would say, like, EFAS on Thai. What else you make? You make anything else? Uh... Like edibles or, or, or mostly I make or, uh, like coconut oil, um, and then yeah. like, like 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 sort of straight up weed oil, just using uh, like high proof alcohol, either isopropyl or grain alcohol. But the classic like, put put your weed in the freezer with your alcohol for a while, then take it out, shake it all together, strain it, and then evaporate off the alcohol, and you're left with just a like a tarry, you know, sort of. Depending how you your wash, it's like between gold and yeah. Um, you should put them in a the bathtub. You put what in the bathtub? I, I, like whenever, whenever, uh, like whenever you dump the oil out, like how you take it out of the freezer, I used to put dump it in the bathtub and with warm water and let the alcohol evaporate that way. Oh, but then what's like what's left over after the alcohol evaporates? Like, is it just weed oil stuck to your bathtub? No, no, I'm talking about like it in a pan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think that bong hit hitting me. <laughs> that would suck. You just sitting there scraping off your tub. So not you like you don't mean a literal bathtub, but like just a a bigger vessel. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, just, yeah, just like a little petri dish. Same, pretty much the same thing. Because <laughs> yeah, like, I I do it just in a uh, so like after our, I strain out all like the weed bits from the alcohol like it's you, you got your weed infused alcohol then i put it into like a cake pan like a glass cake pan put that on a hot plate outside and slowly evaporate off the alcohol like bit by bit pouring like you know one liter at a time and just yeah evaporate but then you're left with you know i, I call it rickson oil up here it's like one of the names but phoenix tears are just weed oil i guess and uh with that, I'll just take it like out of the syringe or out of the little container, or I'll mix it with Nutella often. And oh. that way, like I'll put a gram into maybe a cup of, or half cup of Nutella, and that I find is a pretty good, like if you take like one teaspoon of that, you'll feel it, and you can sort of, you know, try to take your dose accordingly from there. That. And it's delicious. Like, Yeah, because Nutella pretty much got the same consistency whenever you would eat it, so it probably... Probably just blends right in. Nice. It's it's great. And like back in the days when weed was illegal, you can just like you can have like when I was doing road trips in New Zealand, which I, I did for a few years, uh, a, a few winters, I would just like there weed was illegal, and I didn't want to get busted, obviously. So I would just make a big batch of Nutella, throw it in the car, and like no cop was looking for that. Like no, not and, at all. And, like, unless they were really a toker, like, even, like, opening it and smelling it, it doesn't look like... Maybe smelling it, they might get a hint, and tasting it, they'd get a hint, but, like, unless they were, like, really, like, you know, tokers. Yeah. In, in which case, they probably wouldn't be hassling me that hard, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> There's weed in this Nutella. <laughs> I mean, you do it with peanut butter. If you don't want, like, all the sugar that's in Nutella, you can use, like, a, a jar of peanut butter. Nice and subterfuge. Yeah. And just find a good way to eat it. Yeah, usually just put it either in like a capsule or put it under my tongue. Yeah, yeah. The capsules are tricky. Like I can't find a capsule small enough to get like a dose that's like small enough. Yeah. Really. Um, and so yeah, it, the uh, like with the syringe, I can just push them out and sort of know how much you know sort of works or what I'm looking for. 
You just gotta go by the squeeze. Exactly, yeah. How much of a like, weed oil tube is you know coming at the end. <laughs> it, it's not too bad taking it by the capsules. I was taking, uh, I took like three capsules one night, and I'm not like a big RSO person. Yeah, because uh, recently we just opened the dispensaries around here, and it was the first time I've actually tried like official Rick Simpson oil. And I took three capsules of that, and whenever I woke up in the middle of the night, I was like a zombie. <laughs> I mean, <That's> right? <laughs> yeah, it was the, the best head high I've ever had. I'm like, yeah, I'm going right to sleep. It's Why nice. It, yeah, like, it's powerful. If, if you want power, you just take a bigger dose. But if you take, like, nice small doses, you can get just a really nice, mild, euphoric, you know, workable effect that, you know, is, like, less – you're less distracted than, than if you're smoking, but you're still, like, you know, like – walking a couple inches off the ground, you know, and sort of. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got to learn how to take it. Yeah. You, you got to get the dose right. I mean, that's what, yeah. you know, 99% of people's problems with edibles is just not getting the dose right. And then some folks maybe just are too sensitive to take them altogether. But uh, I've, I've had a few edibles really fuck me up. Because it was just like a, a massive dose, or was, was it like no, no, it, just because or, it was a, a lot of oil inside of a little bit? <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I yeah. think it, it was the it was a definitely a high dosage. But I, I'm tempted. Like I've seen some like the sort of you know meme type videos where someone like you know eat a whole like thousand milligram chocolate bar or something like that. I've actually got one of those right here in this little cupboard behind you as well. But like, I, I, I think it would just rock my world. Like, I don't know if it would be fun or not. <laughs> 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 just just like don't taking, eat it with Nicorette. Taking Rick Simpson oil medicinally, like you work up to like a gram or so per day. And that's why I, like, I couldn't imagine taking that much. Like they say your, your tolerance also goes up, which of course it would. But even so, I can't see you being able to like yeah. stand up. But one day... I mean, maybe, you know, while winter's going on here, I'll be looking for something to do. <laughs> or nothing to do at that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Take a whole gram and uh, just get on the couch, see what happens. Uh, yeah, that's one for, that's one for the books. Uh, I, don't yeah, know if I, I don't know if I would, my body would push a whole gram right now. 500 milligrams Zoom Max. I, I might be with you. I I don't even know if I did five milligram or five hundred right now. I might be, I might be at like a fifty milligram. And... Yeah. <laughs> like I do. I think my like little doses of Rick Simpson oil are about a twenty at that gram. That's a so. good dosage. That that's simple. It like keeps you right in that middle point. You can still do shit during the day. You're not too fucked up and too buzzed. You're not going to go to sleep. You might eat something. But you're not going to go to sleep yeah. and you keep continuing your day. Yeah. Yeah, at nighttime, that might be enough to help, like, put you to sleep and, you know, sort of help you wind down and, like. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's not like a couch lock kind of dose. If you double it or triple it, however, things start to get interesting. <laughs> Don't triple it. <laughs> you're going to sleep for a good 16 hours <laughs> or be very hungry. I love it. I I should do some baking, like get a bit more extravagant with my like weed edibles. Um, I made some like Rice Krispie squares a couple weeks ago. Those were good. Although I, I ate the whole, or like at least three quarters of the whole tray in one night, which is almost like inevitable when that happens. So uh, maybe that's why it's like I can't make something that's too tasty, or else I'll just eat too much of it. And uh, you know, classic. That's a problem, too, with edibles. If they taste good and if you just keep eating them and you're not thinking about the, how much dose did you take, take yeah. it, it's, it's, uh, it's a I'll good... Uh, more. Oh, I should, oh, I can handle it. I'm not really feeling that high. It'll be fine. Like, I may as well have two more brownies. Like, what's the, you know, how hard can it hit? <laughs> exactly. And I, I've said that about edibles, too. Like, how hard? And I'll tell you what, it'll kick you in the ass. Some some good oh, animals yeah. will definitely kick you in the ass. You gotta respect them. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can't play around too much with them. That's why I like sticking to my weed, and I can just I, – I know the balance for it. I, I can go the whole day and keep me at a steady point. But as soon as you start feeding me stuff like wax, RSO, edibles, I'm fucked. Yeah. Totally fucked. I'm mostly a weed man. Yeah. Fly, you know, flower, flower man. Where are we going? You found color socks you wearing? Socks? Color socks you wearing? I got like black woolen socks on. It's winter That's here, so it's like come on, like they're they're hiking woolen hiking socks. <laughs> you got to have the warm socks on. At least, at least your toes ain't gonna go numb. Yeah. I work outside, and that's pretty much all I wear. If I'm not wearing just black socks, it's definitely, like, wool construction socks. I don't want my feet falling off. Yeah, you do some uh, carpentry amongst your many skills? Is that yeah, that that's my, my original trade. Uh, I've been doing that since I was eight years old. My dad owned the company, and he had me just going to work with him every day, and then – Amongst that, I started learning how to build houses and buildings, and now I can drive 15 different he pieces of heavy machinery. And Oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, that, that's pretty much – that's my trade before – that's how my, my Top Notch name came about because I started a company called Top Notch Decks and Remodeling, but then that didn't necessarily go so well, so I just stole the Top Notch name and – it was already mine. I already paid for the name, so I might as well sure. just take it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So then I started doing uh, comedy and stuff like that, little skits on my phone, and now three years later, I'm I'm here talking to you, buddy. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. My uh, my dad was also a carpenter. Um, oh, awesome. And, but uh, growing up, I didn't like. I always like. I didn't take the carpentry. And I found, like, I was sort of, like, resist sort of being forced into it by my dad. Like, he'd, he'd try to teach me stuff, but I'd be like, I don't know what to do. And, like, you know, took the sort of, like, the not learning it route, yeah. which, I, which I regret big time. Especially now that I'm a homeowner. I, I really need to <laughs> carpenter up some repairs, you know? I think my passport is still available. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, well, I got a shed. I, I can uh, clear up the shed for you. I, I'm there. You just put me a pillow. I'll sleep right there on a little mat. I'm fine, buddy. I'm not. I don't take up much room. That, that's like one of my my other keys. Like a survivalist, dude. That that is one of my my key things. Like I just love the outdoors. I mean, you oh. have to love nature and outdoors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like like camping and like you know basic outdoor craft as well. I'm not that good at it per se, but uh, I'm interested in it. In it. Um, and I I watch some videos on YouTube about it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, it, if you have common sense, you you can pretty much build anything. I mean, everything's just like putting a bunch of puzzle uh, popsicle sticks together and, and and going up. Also, like like doing like quick shelters and that kind of thing. You're talking talking about wow, well, yeah, yeah, cool. I've, I've never actually done that. I don't think. Yeah, make a, it, make a mean to. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Fuck man, I should do that. I could kick off a, a YouTube channel. Like, I've got backwoods right just back behind my house. You know, that way I can go and uh, try to build a lean to. The, 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 the best thing to do is try to find like a tree with a Y in it, and then you can find like a dead branch and just put a yeah. picker off of it. That sounds familiar. I think I remember that tip from uh, some videos. I I used to watch. Uh, is it Survivor Man? Is that the uh, is, is he the Canadian dude? Yeah, yeah. Last crowd or something like that. Let's... He's amazing. I love his film work. <laughs> so I, I think pretty much what I've learned, I've I've learned from uh, from his uh, his show. <laughs> yeah, I like I like him and Bear Grylls, and those are like my two yeah. go to. Yeah. They they definitely got me more inspired into more uh, survivalist stuff. Yeah, good good skills to have. Yeah, it comes along with the carpentry too. So it does go hand in hand. Yeah, it, it's uh, especially driving like it, 
it's cool to build buildings and stuff like that. But once you start learning how to drive heavy machinery, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Especially like big boom lifts that go like 150 feet up in the air. It, it gets sketchy, but it's amazing. It's yeah, awesome. no, man. Yeah, I, I, I'd be, uh, I wouldn't want that kind of responsibility. You yeah. definitely don't want to hit the bong before that, I'm guessing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, that's all. I think that's the only way we can do it, though. <laughs> well, I would want. To. Let's just I say mean, that. <laughs> I mean, once you're 150 feet up, you can only get so high, right? <laughs> <laughs> man, oh man. I appreciate this conversation with you. Oh man, yeah, it's fun to uh, fun chat with you. Yeah, man, I appreciate everybody in the live. Thanks for coming in, guys. Yeah, I can't. Uh... I haven't been paying any attention to the comments, folks. My apologies. I can't. Uh, no, you, you can't. You can't. It, it, it's so hard. You try to read them, but they go by so fast. And, I mean, you try to catch a certain few whenever they're stopped like this. Yeah, it's too. And my, my brain is, like, not that flexible. <laughs> <laughs> it goes quick. I mean, it, it's hard to try to stay on task keep conversation and read another conversation that's scrolling 50 words a minute. I mean, yeah. I if, like it was a different, if it was a different screen that had like only the comments, maybe that'd be easier, but like just the way it's overlaid too, is too much. Like I'm not even trying to, I'm looking at a totally different part of the phone actually. Exactly. Exactly. You're trying to over under it. <laughs> we, had, we had to keep the, keep them small. That way it goes in a line. But as long, as long as the hearts are going, you know you're doing something good. Oh, sweet. That's what people – people are making that happen? Yeah. Yeah, they, they're, just, they're, they're just over there mass, mass pushing their buttons like this on this little heart to make it go wild, and I love it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. Now I'm starting to see some comments. What's up, Northern Cali? Bam! Where's everybody from? Where's everybody watching from? <laughs> Start my own weed brand. I wish, man. That would be like printing money. I mean, <laughs> although I would want, like growing it would be a lot of work. It's more work than I, you know, thought. Um, but uh, I don't think here in Canada, you can't just, like, I can't just sell weed here. It's government controlled. And so I would, like, there is a gray market and lots of, like, mail order marijuana places that just do it and get away with it, it seems. But uh, I'd be too, too much of a heat score, I'm guessing. I'd probably get shut down. Yeah. But if, if things, like, at least that's how it works in Nova Scotia, I think. Like, it's just the government selling it, basically. Um, but I would love to someday, because uh, I love weed, and uh, it would be an easy way to make money, I think. How, how many, <laughs> it would be definitely easy to make a little bit of money like that. <laughs> I mean, you probably make a little bit of money. I'm not saying a whole ton, but. I've heard, maybe, I've heard. Maybe things. a few hundred truckloads. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a lot of work to, like, manage an actual, like, weed distribution center but uh yeah i could like at least make the packaging hire some employees you know like i'm sure you can get cory and the fuck goofs <laughs> you know what else are they doing these days i know right <laughs> uh a few years i don't know like one or two years ago I, I was doing a live with somebody who grew cbd and they was just cropping for the through the hemp fields and he had a hundred thousand pounds of cbd weed that he showed me in this warehouse i mean it was big bags stopped on top big bags stacked on top a hundred thousand pounds it was a hundred thousand pounds of cbd and i mean this warehouse was almost 500 feet long and i mean they was just stacked it was amazing and it was just all cured cbd he was from oregon did he grow it or was he just like no, no, he he worked for a, a company. It was a dis, uh, dis, dis, uh, distribution company. Yeah, but uh, it, it was it was amazing. Yeah, boy, you sure want to make sure the climate control is on point. It, it, was, it, was, it was a nice building. It was a nice building, and you had to do it. They had to do it in like a, uh, the walls were like so thick with insulation. Just so whenever it was snowing and they were cropping, they so they didn't have to have heaters running. That way it would cure fast or nothing. That way it was all natural. Mm -hmm. 
Man, oh, man. It, it was amazing. So I, I couldn't even imagine opening my own or running uh, a weed company. Like, them guys were amazing. Yes, thank heavens for the weed distributors. <laughs> how much, how many plants are you allowed to grow in Canada? Sorry, say again? Personally, how many plants are you allowed to grow in Canada? Oh, uh, four in general. There might be certain limitations in certain provinces, but uh, yeah, it's four for, for the average citizen. Um, if you get like a prescription, then you can grow a lot more. Um, it don't matter how big? No, I think it's four plants any size. That's yeah, that, that that's the route they went, as opposed to like some kind of like quantity. So you know, Fifteen for a year and a money. Yeah, so you, you could like a smart person could grow a yeah like giant, super giant, you know, twenty foot plant. Uh, I've seen them. That's possible. Yeah, you have to do that indoors here. The season's not long enough to do that outdoors. I don't think. Maybe, yeah, maybe got, just, like. Probably a six month period where that's good. Yeah, I mean, here you want to be like harvesting September, early October. Um, and you can't really put things outside until, you know, end of May. So I would say, do you start your plants indoors before you, you put them outside? I can't, like, here, I'm, I'm right by the ocean and it's so moist here. Like, I, I, I assume it's the moisture, but I get bud rot. I can't grow outside because like bud rot just hits the plants every single time. Yeah. I've tried every time. Every time I've tried, it's just been like devastation. So I just grow indoors. Um, I like to try like if I can get like a really mold resistant strain, I'd like have a go. I haven't really tried to seek that out. Um, but yeah, even like like even if it's like no rain for like six weeks or two months, and then one day of rain, boom, bud rot. Like just oh, like wow. Fucked up. Um, I think it's just like weird, like woods with lots of you know, like old man's beard in the trees. I think it's just weird spores are you know around these parts. Yeah, it, it's tough growing. It's tough growing. Uh, I've had a lot of plants be eaten by deer and and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that'll happen uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> especially especially when they're nice and they're getting at that that nice peak moment, and they're a few weeks from flowering, and then the deer comes up and just starts eating them. And totally dry clean. Well, the deer will eat them when it's like that far along, will it? What's that? Like, like the deer will still eat it when it's like that mature. Like, yeah, yeah, they'll eat it right off the uh, leaf. Because I, yeah, I, I would have guessed maybe that, like all that THC would have you know been a deterrent. Like when they're younger, they eat them because they're like tasty and you know. No, so. I, I've had them eat the buds right off the right off the plant. Oh that's fucked up. Maybe that's when they like what they do before they walk into traffic. Man, oh man. That that's very well possible. That's very well possible. You're all stoned up and you just yeah. come out of the woods and then okay. then you disappear. <laughs> Those big eyes, big doughy eyes. Yeah, I mean that's true story. <laughs> Oh, oh man, where's the old drinky food? How's Mo doing? Mo's doing good. He's 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 also uh, off the smokes. Got him on the Nicorette. Just there you go. He gets. I take the full piece. <laughs> But at least, at least the, the non smoking thing's going pretty good. Oh, sorry, say it again. Uh, did, was you smoking cigarettes too, or were you just putting tobacco in your joints? Like for the last like maybe you know five six months, I was smoking very little cigarettes. Like if I was out having some drinks with some people or on a road trip, like I'd maybe have a just straight up cigarette. But otherwise, I was just putting tobacco in my joints. But I was doing that like you know like smoking 10 joints a day with tobacco so it's crazy how much like if you smoke your joints with tobacco it's crazy how much the tobacco drives your weed or your joint consumption like it's sort of obvious when you think about it but uh like now that i'm not smoking the tobacco i smoke 
weed way less often, like over the course of the day, because I'm not looking for that nicotine fix. Yeah, that that's I never even thought about that. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Uh, I've had lots of time to reflect on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the nine days gone strong. You're already there. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I I feel like I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not out of the woods, but I mean, I feel like I'm. You know, I could do it. I'm doing it. Yeah, man. Congratulations. Yeah, I just gotta like not go on a like I I don't drink much, so it's an easy like easy to avoid drinking too much, but that's where, you know, it's easy to like get the smokes going. Yeah. When you got yeah. When the are going, you know, smokes are going. Yeah. 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 That's definitely happening. <laughs> that's definitely happening. Everybody else smoke while they drink. <laughs> I know a lot of people that don't smoke cigarettes, but as soon as they start drinking, if they're around, they will smoke. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I might do that. And I think I, I mean, I, I should start making excuses now. Yeah, let's let's just not talk about that anymore. But I mean, I, I could have a smoke while I drink and be fine and not smoke again later. <clears throat> but I own zero cigarettes and I'm not going to buy them. I don't really know many smokers anymore anyway, so I, I couldn't even get a smoke actually, like if I was drinking around here. Just keep hitting that bong. Yep. <laughs> yep. The bong and the nicorette. Do you put, you ever put uh, RSO on your bongs? No. No, I feel it's not, uh, I guess I haven't really, I haven't thought of that. I would put it in joints sometimes, but I sort of felt like it was sort of like, I couldn't really tell the difference um, adding it to a joint and I would just save it like to eat like that, that same amount if I ate it, I, I, I would feel it. So I would just sort of like, but now, I mean, who knows if I want an extra kick with the bong, maybe I'll uh, give that a shot. You, yeah. You've done that? I, uh, I, no, I just thought of that. I was, I was yeah. curious. <laughs> I mean, I guess, like, I, I assume it would work. I, I've seen people put, like, shatter and stuff in the bong hits and, like, you know, to make it, like, super powerful, so. You a big wax person? No. Like, I, I think I've been given wax a couple times. Like, I don't really know what the difference is. from. Like, I, I sort of think of all those things as shatter, like, if they – or a concentrate that's sort of like amber colored or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, it, it's a different consistency, obviously. Um, like, does it does it behave differently from uh, other concentrates? Like, 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 what's special about wax? I I I feel like RSO gets me higher than a, a concentrate, like a shatter. Or like a, a live sauce or something. I feel like a RSO is is more more pure from the plant. I, I, I'm guessing, but I don't necessarily know the the, the difference or, or what it takes to get each and each because there are different processes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about it either. I know it's like pure, like it's different solvents used to make the RSO and like the waxes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about, so I won't, I, I won't even try. <laughs> but it's like, it, it's a bit more involved. Like, what's nice about RSO is it's, like, super easy, and you can do it with just your basic stuff in your, you know, kitchen, more or less. Um, I feel like the RSO is easier to put in food and, and stuff like that, more than yeah. just, like, trying to take some some shatter or something. Because every time, like, I get some shatter, I, I like doing dabs, but I just sprinkle it in my joint just for a little bit more boost. But sometimes that usually don't do nothing. So, but I, I feel like RSO will always it'll always have your back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I love it, but I just have been eating it. But um, yeah, maybe I'll try an extra like like I'll try putting some in the bong tonight. Hopefully, it doesn't just make my bong into a gummy like sticky mess, which <laughs> which it might. I guess I could just keep burning it until it's all burned off. I seen uh. You did a movie. What's the the history of violence? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's an awesome movie. Is, is it a full length movie? Yeah, you haven't seen it. No. Oh man, it's got uh, Vigo in it, uh, uh, Aragorn from Lord of the Rings, and he's fucking okay. like kicking ass in it. Oh man. Next time I'm you're looking for a movie to watch, watch that. I'm gonna check that shit out tonight. Everybody, go check that shit out. Oh man, it's it's awesome. 
Yeah. Is that, is that on Netflix? Uh, yeah, hopefully someone else can tell you uh, if it is, because I don't know. But uh, even if you got to pay for it, it, it'd be worth it. But I, I mean, it's, 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 I'm, I'm sure it's bootleg, uh, you know, easy to find on the old pirate sites as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it's a great movie. Maybe, maybe I'll watch that tonight as well. Yeah, man. I'm glad I could bring that back up then. Yeah, Vigos, he's, he's a, just a, a, a suburban man living in a small, you know, rural U.S. town, and then uh, shit starts to happen. <laughs> and, uh, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely Maybe. looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have any more questions for you. Okay, but, but this is it's probably a stupid question, but if you had two minutes of someone's time to make them – a Jacob fan, what what would you show them? Oh, like like what's my pitch? Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, kind of, kind of. How would you draw them in to be like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this dude. I'm gonna watch right. it if they haven't seen Trailer Park Boys. Here I'm a I, I, I'm an illustrator and a screen printer. So here's a one of the prints I'm. I've been working on right now. I've got, like, I started up a, a print subscription club called the Dirty Burger Print Club just a couple months ago. So that's what I'm working on now. i got to get my uh, March mailings uh, sorted. So, yeah, here's a, like, this is a sort of example of my work. I like it. Got, I'll, I'll show you one other one while, uh, while I'm here. I like, uh, like, psychedelic sort of trippy style art. So I've been playing with, uh, it's a bit of a new style, like doing this kind of. I'm playing with these sort of trippy, layered backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, lots of my stuff involves like crazy, you know, sort of um, obsessed drawings and sort of doodle style stuff. But uh, yeah, but have some no, it, it goes it goes well with the the backgrounds of it. I'll show it to you in black if I have one here in black. Oh, I don't. Everybody check it out. So yeah, that, this is just this is what I'm working on these days. And so for screen printing, like I, it's a different screen. They got all these different sort of color combinations that I'm playing with. That's amazing. Sure. But I I do like the white ink. It's a bit more subtle than the black, but uh, it's sort of a bit a bit extra trippy. Yeah, it say. pops it. It pops it. So yeah, I like uh, you know trippy trippy shit. So uh, if anybody's a big acid fan, that's a, that's something to look at right there. Exactly. Acid is definitely one of my teachers. Um, more in my youth than these days. Yeah. Um, I've got like some hits in the freezer, but I don't know. I just haven't been, you know, I guess I just haven't felt to spend time to do like a proper trip. I, I, I've been doing some microdoses here and there, although I haven't done, done one in, in months. But like, I was doing like a 50th of a hit, which is, you know, very micro. Yeah. I, well, I think these, these, these hits are pretty strong, which. You know, as to the strength, obviously, but uh, yeah, I couldn't like nibble on it. Yeah, I, I'd love to do like a, a proper trip one of these days, but uh, yeah, I have to like I gotta loosen up my, my brain or something. Yeah, hey, you might make some some cool sprint, uh, some cool prints. Yeah, I could. I've, I've never found that I draw well while I'm like actually high on psychedelics, but uh, I think it's certainly like give you some crazy ideas or you know, and some awesome ideas. Oh, especially with what you're doing, I'm sure it opens it up. Especially with the, the, the doodle art on it. I mean, with the, the trippy backgrounds, you can just pretty much freestyle with and, and put whatever you want there, and it'll come to life for you. And Yeah, I can like, actually draw right on these. I can print up just like the background patterns and then draw right on those. That might make it uh, – that I haven't tried. <laughs> Something to do. You got to take that day off. We're, we're, we're at a, a grandma RSO now. And a few tabs of acid, and yeah. we're on good. <laughs> we're on a good day. Yeah, the the, the list of like drugs I I'm I need to do. <laughs> like, not enough time in the day, I tell you. I know, right? Goddamn <laughs> drugs, they take up all. Who who, can, who got the time to do drugs no more? Like, shit. You'd think there'd be no better time, but uh, I know. Uh, <clears throat> I swear, I've been like I I, I I've been busier. I, I need to take like a week's vacation and like get away from my house. 
I feel I feel like I've been busier in the house doing stuff than than I would outside on a yeah day exactly day. exactly yeah but uh, hey there's worse problems to have like it's it's good to be good to be busy it's just like for me it's mostly a time management thing I think um, yeah. no it's definitely a time management thing I mean even I wake up at six o'clock in the morning every single day no alarm no nothing it's like programmed into my head. Uh, I couldn't sleep in if I tried, but it, it is once that that certain time hits. I mean, it, it's like again a, a big repetitive circle anymore. Hmm. Trying to stay busy and, and trying to stay focused is definitely the key. Stay motivated. Yeah, it's the truth. But yeah. you, you seem like you're doing good, like being productive, and uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Busy. Yeah. Uh, I wrote, I wrote two movies during the quarantine, so that that's had me busy. And then I wrote like a little uh, called the Top of the Knot show about two twin brothers. Uh, that that's awesome that I did. It's kind of funny if you got a sense of, a weird sense of humor. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I've I've been pretty busy. I mean, keeping busy. Pretty much all you can do, right? Yeah, yeah. He even made a green screen. Whew. And, and that, that's another thing that I learned how to do during quarantine. I, I've learned how to edit during, uh, like, still not properly because I'm, I'm self-taught on everything. And besides, like, looking at little things on YouTube and everything, I mean, YouTube can't do it for you as much as they show you. You know what I mean? And, and they... YouTube had stuff too. They don't tell you everything how to do stuff. They leave out little things. Oh God, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can only imagine how much there is to learn. Yeah, I see yeah. someone here uh, like in front of my pants. Or, oh, that, that's a pretty old comment. But uh, I'm not wearing work pants <laughs> right now. But I'm wearing even more. I got <laughs> some nice uh, joggers on. <laughs> there we go. We're, we're comfy, man. We're relaxed. <laughs> this is how we gotta be. Actually, I got a whole jogging uh, outfit on, except I, jogging is also something that's on the list of things I got to get to. Jack <laughs> <laughs> it off, I, I agree with you. But I think we got like three minutes left on here. Well, cool. Is there like a, a, a time goes, limit? Yeah, it goes for like an hour. Cool, that works. I'll go make my uh, cheese and veggie quesadillas. Sounds good, brother. Sounds good. I appreciate this conversation with you. I appreciate everybody in the comments. Oh, man, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, nice uh, casual convo. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, very I, well for me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I like I like the – since I started doing the interviews, everything's been cool and nice and slow, and it's been fun. It's been fun. A lot of different uh, – people on here that who is all in like the entertainment world so which is cool to learn and everybody can get that 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 knowledge from different uh entertainers being on here and not just myself you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah i actually i just checked out um uh, earlier this afternoon uh you're talking to um, the, the stuntman dude stunt yeah. person i can't yeah. remember his name right uh, yeah yeah, that's cool. That that reminded me of uh, working on one of the zombie flicks when uh, us background zombies were like some of them were stepping on one of the stunt guys who had like fallen on the ground and a bunch yeah. of us had to climb and he would the stunt guy was so angry he would get up and just start screaming at people who the fuck stepped on me I'm gonna fucking kick your ass and like all those hundred background zombies was like oh man he w he was actually in Zombie Land one and two oh wicked so he, um, I wasn't in those particular zombie movies but we're uh, Zombie genre colleagues. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he he got amazing work. He got a, a lot of good movies out there, and he's been a, a stunt double for a lot of people. I mean, he's definitely a I good. Mean, Check him out. Yeah, if if you haven't followed him, follow him. He's, yeah, he's yeah, definitely amazing. Yeah, I do do some of my own stunts in Trailer Park Boys, but uh, <laughs> it, it's it is a pretty tough job to do if if you're doing anything big. I, I couldn't imagine doing, doing well, that shit. Well, you got your hair this season, so that's a good thing. And you're not blue. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they're taking it easy on me. 
<laughs> That's good. <laughs> but it's been fun. I appreciate talking to you. I wish this thing was a little bit longer, but I don't want it to cut out. But guys, give Jacob a follow. Fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Top Notch. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it's uh, It's been a blast. Thank you guys. See you guys later. Bam!